Alright. What's happened in here? What the fuck? That should be fine there. Right, so this is a set of a film. Like, it's my street, but it's completely changed. Like, drastically. So I thought I'd come out and show you. Just because I think it's been, oh shit. I think it's been taken down soon. Sorry, I just hit you. So I've just come out. Just take a few photos. Was there a car there? They shouldn't be a car on you. You'll ruin all the tracks. Might get some like B real footage for this vlog as well. I can't look for the viewfinder because of this uh helmet. God everything just looks so weird. I'm gonna get my wine angle lens out. If any of you have been uh, been to um how off before, you'll know this is not what it looks like like at all apologies for not talking too much I'm just trying to like I don't know get this shot <laughs> So this is being taken down soon. Oh, it's, it's 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 surreal. Like this film, right? It's called "To Walk Invisible." It's a BBC production. I don't know why they chose Howarth. It might be because of, like well, the Brontes and stuff. But like a few weeks back, I did a vlog. Um. That we're showing you a film set, big wooden film set of my street, and that's for this film. It just looks so like, just looks so sick. Like it's all made out of like plywood and board. Like all I build in there, and these aren't usually here. This is just like plywood. I think I'm going to slip because obviously proper slippy. This might be a bit of a weird start to a vlog because I'm actually going to vlog today. Which I really wanted to come and see before I got taken down and get some pictures because I haven't actually got any pictures yet. I just I, I just haven't been asked to come out to be honest. Like this is usually a pub. Look at the sign. This sign is so weird. It just looks so weird. It's really cool though. That guy there on the floor. That's well funny. I can't get a picture of him though because he's too far away. Alright. So basically, the BBC are filming a film called To Walk Invisible. And I'm not sure what it's about. But it's set in the like the eighteen hundreds. So therefore they've had to change like the whole of like Main Street in Howarth is like the the that, that oil. Someone did my oil today, so I think that's just oil. What they've spilled, and they haven't put that on properly. Are you fucking serious? Oh, oh, well, I can't trust anyone. All right, I need, my, I need my gloves. You know when things just like don't go right. Yeah, so that it's set in like the eighteen hundreds. So they've had to change, it's set in Howarth, it's set in 1800, so they've had to change like the whole of Howarth to look like it used to do in the 1800s. Alright, back to the normal skip. oh fuck! <laughs> as soon as I set off I get something in my eye, that is actually typical. Back to the normal day, normal, normal styled vlog. I have, I have, um... 
I say errands. I actually have one errand to run. I'm actually using um the gop. I'm not gonna do that. Sorry. I need to do my fucking helmet up. Sorry for my language, but do you ever do that? Do you ever just forget to do your your helmet up? I do it all the time. It's because I've just been preoccupied with looking at this set. Oh. Yeah, I'm actually using um, the GoPro Hero 4 uh, Silver. So this should come out as a 1080p. 60 frames a second, I am I'm hoping. My editing software is not like the best, so... If it's not, then I apologise, but it is recorded. It's some sick quality. <laughs> yeah. Right. Fuck! More shit in my eye! I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna close it fully. There we go. I'm gonna steam up really bad, but you know. I think there's something in my helmet. It wasn't in my helmet, it was on my helmet. Right. To Walk Invisible is the film. It's a BBC production. Uh, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but they've had to build a, a huge, a huge set made out of plywood on my street. Um, of, no, not sorry, not on my street, of my street. And they've built that up on the Mars. And I went to go see a few vlogs ago. If you want to go check that out, then uh, be my guest. I want to go up again, but I feel like if I go up, I'm just going to be like awkward again and not go up. <laughs> but um, yeah. Where was I? Yeah. So they have to set Howarth back in time. Set the 1800s, and it, I think it looks really cool. I'll let you know as soon as the film comes out, and I want you to comment on either this video or the latest video when that film comes out. Telling me if you recognise anywhere <sighs> from my vlogs. Because you will. Because you will. Because, like, you see my street almost every video, so. <laughs> Alright, errand complete. Free time is mine. Shut up. Alright, yeah, so I've talked about the film. So that's one. That's one topic done that I wanted to talk about. A, um,. Another topic, a lot of people have their CBT coming up, so I wanted to talk about like CBTs and stuff in more detail because last time I did, I ended up like going off topic and talking about something else, let me just open my, uh, my vents. I'm steaming up like a bitch, and I don't want my, uh, I don't want my visor shut, it sounds a lot better with my visor shut but I steam up and I can't see. Please be dead, please be dead soon. I hate that road because like you can't see it on vlogs but it is ridiculously steep. So it is so hard being a 50cc to set back off off that street. Oh ah, I got home from school today. I clicked on my I clicked on YouTube on my laptop to check out because my my upload schedule is at two o'clock. And I go on from school at about 20 past, 20 past 3. So until I get home, I can't see like any likes, comments, views. So I clicked on YouTube on my laptop to check out my views. But then <laughs> I fell asleep and I woke up. Oh, they're filming. Am I going to be in the film? Oh, he gave me. If looks could kill, I would literally be over there. He gave me the deadliest stare. Wonder what films that is. I swear Howth just like the location for films at the moment. Because that's nothing to do with the film. Hello! Dog getting in front of me! Dog getting in front of me! I don't know if you saw that, but it was a little bird like a little bird just following me in front of me. Um Yeah, like that was nothing to do with the film production. That was just like it was like a documentary or something. I don't know. Right, anyway, CBTs. I'm going to talk you through my CBT and what I had to do. So we got there. It was me and my dad doing it actually because he recently bought a Vespa, which he wanted to do his CBT to pass to ride that Vespa, you know, you know, as you, as you would do, obviously. So we got there. It was in like, it was in like a school, like a school, not playground, but like outdoor area. Not kind of, you know, like you get astroturfs. Like, in like a big cage. It wasn't an astroturf, but it was like a gravel, sort of like gravel concrete field. So we got there. 
We had to wait about 20 minutes because the guy was running a bit late. So he came and he had a 125 and a 50cc scooter with him. Because my dad was doing his 125 test and I was doing a 50cc test, obviously. I mean, this is like common sense, but he brought them with him. I don't know where I am. Yeah, I do. And I, I, no, I don't know where I am with talking, I mean. Like, um, so he brought them with him. And I always slip out there. And, uh, God, I keep losing my train of thought. I'm really sorry. I'm really tired. It's just been an exhausting week. I have another maths exam tomorrow, which is, <laughs> kill me. Um, sorry. CBT, so right. So he brought a 125 and a 50 with him. So anyway, we got out. And uh, we put all our gear on, like our jackets, um, our helmets. Uh, it gave us high-vis vests as well, so we, like, we'd be seen during our test. So we put them all on, and like he looked at us. Well, not like rude, he was, he was actually a really nice guy, but he looked at us and like, so is this the gear you're wearing today? And we were like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was like, oh, well, you're gonna have to get into the habit of wearing like boots, because I wore trainers. I think I wore like, I think I wore Roshiers or something. If you know what night rushes are, then you'll see they're not very like suitable shoes for crashing. I wore rush. I'm gonna go slow because I want to talk about this. I wore rushes. Um, he was like, you're gonna have to get into the habit of wearing boots because you need to wear boots when doing your CBT or, or riding a bike. So I was like, all right, okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, so and then he like, my helmet wasn't road legal apparently. Apparently it was like a, a, an off-road dirt bike helmet. Shit, this can't be on me, I better speed up. Um, yeah, my helmet was apparently illegal, so I had to... He didn't give me enough one. He was just like saying, you need to get a new helmet, because if you get stopped with that, you'll you'll get like your license taken off you or something. He wasn't like, a, he wasn't a dick about it. It was like, it was nice. He was like saying, oh, you know, you just need to get a new one just as soon as you can. So I was like, all right, okay. And I did say with my dad. My dad didn't have much faults. Um, oh, he also said my gloves. I had, I had these gloves on, I think, or some, something similar. And uh, he said, these gloves are for like snowing, for when well, it's snowing. So if you go skiing and you fall over and you put your hands down with these gloves on, it's just gonna like padded. But if you fall on concrete and you put your hands down, you're gonna scrape these gloves, you're gonna rip them off and you're gonna scrape all your hands. So it was, it was like saying, these aren't, these aren't good gloves, you need to buy some better motorbike gloves. So I was like, all right, yeah, fair enough. So then for the next like hour or 45 minutes, we just stood around uh, while he like talked about bikes. Well, like, answer questions. He like, he, like, talked to us about the brakes and the brake discs and stuff and, like, the brake pads will actually, like, break for you. And we talked about that, the engine and stuff. And then he talked about gears on 125, which I didn't really listen to because I was just doing my 50cc, my 50cc CBT. So I didn't really listen to that. That was my dad's forte. So then he gets these bikes out and he's like, right, you, talking to me, you go on this bike, on this 50cc, start it up for me. And show me how you get it running. So I started looking at the, I kick started it, and I revved it like that. Just, like, just give it some revs. And he's like, "Yep, yeah, perfect. That's fine." And he did the same with my dad. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, perfect. And then he said to me, "Okay, you go and ride round laps. Do laps of this for me, while I teach your dad the basics of riding a geared bike. Because riding a geared bike is obviously a lot harder than riding a normal, a normal 50cc scooter." So I was like, all right, yeah, fair enough. This this video is not going to be long enough, so I'm going to I'm going to go I'm going to go out out. I'm I'm not just going to ride in a circle. It's going to look like a circle for the start, but it's not. I promise. So he, you're like, yeah, you ride, you just do laps of this place for me, and then and then uh, while I teach your dad how to do this. So um, I was riding around for probably about half an hour. It's it's just it's fun really. Cause you just get to ride around doing circles for ages. Like you got to where we were, it had like an, a border. I think it's like for football and like when you kick the ball out. That's that's the out play sort of thing. But uh like it was just fun like just riding around. So we were, I rode around for ages while it, my dad was like learning how to use gears again because he used to have a motorbike but he'd obviously forgotten because it's, it was what, about ten years. So literally if you're just doing a fifty cc scooter C B T and you're the only 50 there, you'll just ride around for a while, while the, the 125 people are getting taught. But please do not hold me against that, that is not 
I promise, because it could be different for you. And again, yeah! It could be different for you. All of this, what I'm saying, could be different for you. So don't... I'm just telling you about my experiences. So, after riding around for ages... Oh, some dicks overtake me here. Fucking corner! There's a fucking corner there. A van came on the corner as he overtook, and he was he was close to me as well. That's the thing with 50 scooters, 50, 50 scooters, 50 cc scooters. If you ride up hills, dicks are going to overtake you on shitty places. That's a thing to consider. Fuck's sake! It's annoying. Anyway, back to topic. I was riding around for ages. Blah blah blah. Sound. Um. I feel so cool like the wind against my hand. Um, and then when he when he thought my dad was like up to scratch and fine, he came over to me and said, Right, I'm gonna watch you now. Can you just do me a few more laps while I watch you and see how you do? So I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So I was riding around, making sure to use my uh, indicator. This is your indicator by the way, this here. This is your full beam, that's your indicator. So I was riding around. And uh, as I turned the corner, I used my indicators and I braked properly. I used my, my front, I pressed my front brake a bit first, and then my back brake. That's what you got to do. That's how it teaches you. So it's like riding fast, 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 fast. A little bit of pressure on your front brake, and then your back brake. Because if you slam your back brake on, you're just going to skid out. And if you slam your front brake on, you're just going to like go like like, like falling head over heels, like over there. So he was like, "All right." So he watched me. I said, "Yep." He went, "Yep, that's good. That's fine." So if you don't mind riding over here for me, please. So I rode over there, so it towards him, and um, there's something rattling in my back. I think it's deodorant. I think it's a deodorant can. So I rode over to him, and he was like, "Right, so you, you obviously know what you're doing when riding your bike." I was like, "All right." So I, I took that as a compliment. <laughs> so now I want you to. He set out some cones. He set out one cone there. So this is the field. He set one cone there and one cone there. He said, right, I want you to do a figure of eight for me, please. If you don't know what a figure of eight is, it's where he sets up a cone there and a cone there, and you've got to ride in the shape of a figure of eight uh, while keeping a constant acceleration, no braking, and no putting your feet down. I recommend practicing that a lot because that's like a key thing. So yeah, there's, a, there's two cones, and you've got to ride in a figure of eight in and out of them like that. I don't, I don't, I don't think he minds if like he's doing a constant acceleration, but then you're slowing down a bit, so you go, and you drag yourself a bit. I think that's fine. Just, just that's what you've got to know to do. Just figure of eight. Just do what he tells you to do, because mine might be different to yours. So then I did a figure of eight, and I put my foot down by accident. It was like, oh, sorry, you got to try, you got to do that again. So I did it again. And you're not allowed to, like, you're not allowed to have your foot off in case you fall. You've got to keep both feet on your bike and you've got to have, I'm scared to close my knees because I've got stuff in my pockets. You've got to have your knees closed like that. You can't be like that because that's like <coughs> affecting your balance. So you can't have your knees closed, you've got to have them, you've got, no you can't, you can't have your legs open, you've got to have them like closed in. So then when I eventually got it, he said right, well you keep doing them for me while I go and obviously, while I go and, but yeah, then he went to my dad and my, my dad did it as well. So I was just I was there doing figure of eights for ages, which is fine because it's just I enjoy riding. And any type of riding I enjoy, so just doing that was like fine for me. Oh there was traffic lights here earlier on. And they held job for ages. Where was I? Yeah, so I was sat there doing I'm not sat there, I was riding I was just there doing fifty fifth uh, figure of eights, sorry. While um, he was showing my dad how to do figure of eights. So while my dad was doing his figure of eights, I just I was just, just sat there doing mine. That driver was so close behind me that whole time. Anyway, so once you've got your figure of eight down, and once you, once you like the, the people you're with have got their figure of eight down, because you can do your CBT with four people or maybe more. But there was only me and my dad that had booked on that day, so it was only me and him, so it was fine. Oh, fuck! That hurt my balls. Sorry. Um. So figure of eight done, right? Just in my fucking flies. 
Just imagine you've done that and he's come up and he came over to me and went, right, I think you've got that now. So if you won't mind coming over here. So we, me and my dad rode over to him and he started talking to us. It's like, all right, no, not, not obviously not you're right. <laughs> what am I on about? He started talking to us saying how like our riding skills and stuff and then the stuff that he wants us to do. And then how he said, explained how late we're going to go on the road. So then he, then he said, right, so I've set up some more cones here. Then he set up a cone, like he set up four cones in a square shape. This is this is the place, right? He set up four cones in a square shape. Oh, sorry, I got congestion. So, and um, he said, right, so ride down the first set of cones for me, and then do a U-turn inside the cones. So yeah, like, and the cones got thinner and thinner. And like, you had to do it like a U-turn. Without putting your foot down, I think. Yeah, without putting your foot down, you had to do a U-turn inside the cones. Like you couldn't. So these were the cones. You couldn't like go out like that. You had to remain inside the cones. And it's actually it's like like it's harder than you think, but at the same time it's like relatively easy. I really need to. I really need to to, to button to not to button to do this like up. Look, I don't know if you can see that, but um, and then so. After a while we did that, it was fine because it kept shuffling them closer and closer. Which obviously made it harder and harder. But we did that, it was fine, finished. And then um, we had to do this thing called emergency stop. Which is where you start from the back end of the court you're in. And you just full throttle it. Full throttle, go as fast as you can. Straight down the court. And he stands in front of you. And as soon as he, put, as soon as he goes like that and puts his hand up you have to you have to just put the brakes on you have to stop it's like stop that's why it's, it's, it's for like it's for when a car stops in front of you and you've got to like stop straight away because you might hit the car um, and basically just do the same thing front brake then back brake but do it a little bit faster but the hard thing is you've got to do it without skidding or like dragging your wheels sort of thing if you don't know what skidding it's skidding it's where like you brake and your back wheel drags across the floor and you've got to do it without without skidding or drifting whatever you want to call it turn down here sun shine oh bit bumpy bit bumpy sorry where are i yeah emergency stop i'd recommend just like front brake back brake but like do them do them fast you you have to do them fast to stop quickly and if you don't get it right the first time, you'll be like, right, sorry, no, wrong, go around and try again. So it went me, I did it. And I kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it until I got it bang on perfect. Literally. I, I, I stopped that shit. <laughs> but I full on, oh, I owned that. Like, because a while, I didn't, uh, and I, I wasn't quick enough, I like, ride in, and I stop. But then I came to a stop, so I slowed down too slow when it's got to be instantaneous I can't click because I've got gloves on it's got to be instantaneously you just got to stop so I kept doing it and then one time I actually did skid I went my back wheel just went I was like fuck's sake so, oh it stinks then muck spreading again I said that in my last video as well well a few videos ago actually oh I can't talk it fucking stinks I'll be, I'll be back when it goes because I can't breathe in oh it's gone my smell has gone Thank fuck for that. So, oh, I just almost got air, I got airtime off my seat then. Weird. Oh, fuck. So, I came to a stop perfectly. Didn't skid. I stopped in the quick enough time. Fine. Then my dad did it, obviously. Because everyone's got to do it. So my dad did it. And then he did it fine. I'm scared this car's gonna try to overtake me. And he did it, he got it down. And then after that, he found it safe to ride around the road with us. And the bike he had was a, a 1200, I can't remember what it was, but it was 1200cc. So he could just bomb past us. And uh, what he did was he gave us these little earpieces that we put in, where we, we couldn't speak back to him. Just, we just listened to him. Like, we didn't have microphones, we just had an earpiece where he had a microphone and an earpiece. 
So they gave us these earpieces, and we had to tune it into the right like station for like a walkie-talkie sort of thing. So we did that, and um, well, after we'd done that, we were like, right, okay. So now I think you're ready to go out on the roads. So we went out on the roads. I I, I don't know the roads we did it at. I have no idea where it was. I know where it was, but I don't know the roads. Like I don't know where. If I went there now, I wouldn't know where places are. I just don't know the roads. Like I know these roads. So it was like a completely new experience, but like I had to go up front first. So I was up front, and then then we swapped, and my dad went up front, and then we swapped, and then the guy, like the, the CBT guy, went from up from behind us to up front. So we followed him. But literally, he just said to us like. He like, he like congratulated us when we did something good and uh, he was like right so in like next 100 yards we're going to be turning right so this would be this right here so we'd know, we'd know to indicate, we'd know to turn, we'd know to do everything right so he just he just spoke to us and told us things to do which was, which was good, I, I that calmed my nerves a bit because like it was my first time ever being on the road on my scooter so it calmed my nerves like having him talk to me so we went went round this place and everything was cool and he like spoke to us and, uh, and told us what to do but whenever we fucked up he was like oh you shouldn't have done that 50cc vlogs <laughs> like, you shouldn't have done that 50cc vlogs is dad because when he spoke to us we could hear what he was saying to both of us so yeah that's, just, that's fine and um sorry we went, we went around the roads and it was completely fine. It was scary though because it was in the middle of a city, a jam-packed city, which, considering I hadn't been on the roads before, I was a bit like, ah, shit, this is different. So, <laughs> so we rode around. We um, I can smell that ganja. Right, smelling smelling weed, literally is like the only smell I ever smell these days. It's just weed, weed, weed all the time. So we rode round this city, and then we, he put he took us into a back street, and he was like, "Right, come down this back street and do a U-turn at the end for me, please." So we did that, and he was like, "Right, so now he's on your U-turn. Do an emergency stop for me." And he said that really quick. He went, he said that really quick. He said, "Right, do an emergency stop for me." But obviously quicker because if I say it quicker, you won't get what I'm saying. So we was like, slam brakes on, we slammed our brakes on. And it was like, right, well done, thank you. So we did that, and then we rode round some more. And ba like these bikes were his bikes. Like he was a self-employed CBT guy. And these were his bikes. So we rode around the city and then we started riding again. Which actually took us to his house. Like it took us to this CBT guy's house. And then we, we, we handed the bikes back, like we rode them into this garage. And he was like, oh, cheers lads, I'll, I'll lock it up, don't matter. I have my lights on. Why did he, did he flash, why did he flash me? Is it because he saw me earlier? I don't know, my camera on. Yeah, why did he flash me? Confused, oh well. Where was I? Yeah, so he's like, oh, sound lads, I'll lock them up, it's fine, don't worry about it. And then he signed us off, he, he gave us our certificates. For our CBT. And then... He gave us a lift back to the to the place where we did it. We got in our car and went home. That was literally my CBT. So if if listening to my experiences has helped you in the slightest, then let me know because I'm a bit stuck on ideas and this ideas ideas, and this was someone's idea in the comment so comments. So I do read your comments. So let me know if this helped. And uh, that's it from me.